Co open. We're gonna move it like. In five, four, three. I don't know. I'm talking about what we're gonna chat about. Like we haven't been doing nothing. She's another one. Hey, oh. Welcome to this week's <laughs> Mocha in the Morning. <laughs> well, we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend and <laughs> popcorn, obviously, mm -hmm. and coffee. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I am your host, Miss Keisha Boyd, and this is my wonderful co-host, officially Jorge Macafe Con Leche. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Mm -hmm. How are you, love? I'm fabulous. Listen, let me tell y'all, mm. I got a whole eight hours of sleep last night, so I am fiddling Great. Right. We all bright and sunny oh, this morning. Listen, it's amazing what yeah. sleep can do for you. Right. And well, unfortunately, I didn't get any sleep on Saturday night because mm -hmm. some people mm -hmm. had me working until wee late hours of the evening. Looking at fashion. Right. But anyways, it was pretty <laughs> fabulous to help accessories. Uh, Fashion Week and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We had our media suit there. Yes. You know, Mocha in the Morning was representing. So, um, again, Lacey B. Smith and his team to put together a great event. Beautiful. And uh, anyway, so we will see a little bit mm -hmm. of the after party or the after fashion show interview when everything was broken down mm -hmm. later on in the show. Awesome. We have so much to talk about today. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're ready to hear it. But first, super <laughs> Mocha in the Morning is sponsored by Bill Curry Ford. All right, we are back. Once again, this is Keisha Boyd, and your host for Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend, and I'm here with my wonderful Hi. co-host, officially Jorge. Let's talk about some things. Let's talk about some steamers, yes. first of all. So it looks like um, DT, uh -huh. and I'm 45, um, he's um, really targeting uh, black voters. So go to the story on BET.com, wow. right? It gets into um, this current administration's Stay Woke campaign. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's anything that this administration needs to awaken. Okay. You Dude, know, so because, you know, they just, they just don't have a very good track record on, like, rolling things out, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? And for me, like, in a way, it's, it comes across as just as insulting. Correct. Like, I'm not <laughs> like, even going to waste my time, energy, or headspace. Right? No. Could you imagine, like, the the the, the marketing uh, promotional materials they're going to have to do it? Uh -huh. Hi, come hey, on hey, in. We're hey. just getting a visit from the, um, from the Portugal Cafe. Come on, bring it over, bring it over. Bring it over. Bring it over. Right. We're just talking about steamers. Yeah. So anyways, um, <laughs> see, like, you know. We put our hey, product on our cafe, coffee, coffee, and food Ooh, in our mouth. Thank you. Yeah, you are yeah, so yummy. welcome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this looks amazing. Love Thank my you. job. You all enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. right, so anyways, you know, I just cannot wait to hear what Black Twitter has to say about this. Oh, honey. You already know. <laughs> we'll let you know next week. That's right. All right, what you got for us? This is really super cool. So, if you go to thegrio.com, fabulous story about Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart, Jamie Foxx, Mar and Lawrence. Oh my goodness. They're all on board for Netflix is a joke. Now when I first saw the headline, I, I, was, was, like, I was like, what? I was like, wait a minute. Like, is this an it, anti Netflix thing? I was like, oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I just love the whole like, you know, kind of like, wow, you know, when we sit down and we write mm -hmm. our things. I was like, look at that. Um, but yo, further reading into it, it's gonna be a huge laugh out situation. And they're gonna like do this in LA. Yeah. At different mm -hmm. venues, comedy clubs, everything in Los Angeles. So I think it's what they Clever, right? Yeah, it's clever. April, right? And it's good to the grill .com, mm -hmm. um, to get but I'm sure once it does pop off, we'll bring you it'll move into like our piping hot segment. Absolutely. But like, dude, like really? That's amazing. Like, like, that's... He has everybody, like they have every yeah. top black comedian that's going to do this thing. So it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a black top. Yes it is. <laughs> Let's move well, it on. Yes, okay. and now Okay, so this steamer involves us yes, it does. because we are going to be yeah, uh, Jazz in the Gardens. Yes. 
So we're gonna put a link right now. So if you wanna buy tickets and see us there, that'd be cute. Yes, but yes, you know, we'll yes. be there, of course, covering the event. Let me tell y'all, Jasmine Gardens this year, and I've been to Jasmine Gardens several times. This is 15th year. And they have really, really put the fire on yeah. the stage. Mary J. Blige. Jill Scott. Her. Her. Charlie Wilson. Yeah. Um, who else? SWV. S S W V A. -A. <laughs> it's a two day show. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. So you can make it down to Miami Gardens. It's going to be a good time. And, like, and if you see us, be like, hey. Hey now, hey. We'll be adding our little flavor to yes, the morning blend. Absolutely. And uh, another thing, okay, so check this out. Go to Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. uh, dot com and look in their story section. So the federal um, appeals court refuses to block felons from voting mm -hmm. in the March presidential primary. Yes. I mean, you know, we had all that drama before yeah, they passed right? it. And then they said they had to pay their fines and pay restitutions off. And then they fought it on the federal level. The federal was like, no, nah, we're not doing that. Let the people vote. Thank you. So, About time somebody has some sense in the exactly. federal government. Yeah, so whoop whoop for that. No. And so Make we'll sure see, you vote. Yeah, and then we'll see what happens, like, you know, when, you know, you do vote. Absolutely. And everybody does vote. And see how that kind of creates, like, an impact. Because now you can break it down exactly. as to, like, the sense of specific now. Yep, yep. All the Steve Kornackis of the world just know how to put that all down. So, yeah, those are all your steamers. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for Piping Hot coming up next. That would be very interesting. It is. Aww. Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. Hi, Mocha Marvels. This is Kenya Woodard. I'm the president of the Tampa Bay Association of Black Journalists. The Tampa Bay Association of Black Journalists will host its first social event of the year, Wine 101. Come join us on March 11th. It's a Wednesday night to learn more about African-American vintners at Del Frisco's. Hope to see you there. Hello, welcome back to Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor mm -hmm. to your morning blend. I am your host, Miss Keisha Boyd, and this is officially Jorge. And we are here for your piping hot topics this week, and woo, is it packed. Yes, it sure is. And of course, we have our wonderful contributors. Yes, we sure do. Starting off with the lovely Kicking It with Kia. Hi, guys. Hey. And the doctor is in the house, Jen Dobson. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Good morning, my love. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Coffee Ooh, is kicking me. in. We're right about now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very ironic that I would cough at this very moment because the first topic <gasps> oh. is coronavirus. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I cannot believe you did that on air. Oh, my God. They're going to shut us down now. <laughs> I can't prepare with that. I can't prepare. First of all, good morning. It's from the Cuban toast that I was eating. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Let's just be honest. Okay. Mm. Coronavirus. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what? <laughs> Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. No, no. Listen, this thing yeah, is like, seriously. Ooh, seriously, yeah, like it's picking up, picking oh up, picking gosh. up a lot of steam. First of all, there's a story that came out uh, about uh, the Amazon employee. Right. Uh, so, which okay. So they're in Washington. Like, there's no telling, you know, where this, you know, virus is going to pop up. It's right. just like, you know, it's so like weird and random and just, you know, why there and how it happened. And the thing is, they're having a hard time um, trying to figure that part out. Right. And number two, um, you know, they can't get people tested fast enough. Yeah. Like, like nobody's ready to like do anything it's yeah. like just so much like oh uh, what do we do what do we exactly. do what do we do yeah and i know some people are very like oh you know the media is blowing out of proportion or whatever i like no you got to stay ready yeah instead of like at the last minute trying to, trying to like get it together yeah. look uh -uh. well so the amazon employee in washington state test, test, tested positive the pope the public guy, yeah. okay has been exposed but doesn't say that he's sick or anything right he has right a well cold, they, yeah they say that the vatican has stated that um you know he does not have the virus correct he's got a cold he just has a cold but he, he touches a lot of people he does i mean and they all kiss his ring and you know all that and everybody wants to touch him well hopefully they just from all over the world mm -hmm. are, like people come from all over the world um there the, was an iranian leader yeah that died from the coronavirus mm -hmm. so that's craziness. And then, 
can't find. Oh, first of all, go out and try to buy some hand sanitizer or mask. Yeah, it's, and it's like a wrap. yeah. Not only that, but then the press gouging that's happening. Like people are kind of like a little bit out of control. And I really think it's very sad that um, you know the corporate America would would Allow, do that. Yeah. I would be like, you know what, make this stuff accessible to ASAP and yeah. to everyone instead of like something that was maybe like for a two pack eight ninety yeah. nine. Now it's like a hundred dollars. That's so crazy. Not that's too. just ridiculous. Yeah, it really is. Mm. But we walked in today and usually we greet with a kiss, you know, with a <laughs> mwah, mwah. But today we did what? Nice. Nah, I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> I'm going to stay right here. You're going to stay right there. <laughs> so, yes, we did no kissing of the cheek today. Yeah. We namaste. <laughs> okay. All right, <clears throat> moving on. Super Tuesday. And was it super? Wasn't it? Ooh. So, as we've known, like, for the last few days, people have been dropping out of this race like crazy, dropping right? Like, Drop. Drop. And so, for one, let's talk about Super Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden obviously had a great, 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 great uh, day on Tuesday. Yeah, the comeback okay. kid is at the call now. So, he came through. Bernie Sanders right behind him. What's the other one? Pete. No, Pete's gone. Oh, Pete's gone. Oh, 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 uh, who's still in the race? Correct. In the oh, race. um... Uh, well, for me, that's all that really matters now. <laughs> Correct. So, so, Kia, talk to us, girl. This has been a very crazy um, political season, I, I must say. I mean, the diversity of candidates was crazy. Um, the debates got a little off the wall. But Biden, and I hate to say this, was always going to be the pick. That there was, I mean, we can always say, oh, well, Warren had a chance and Klobuchar really came up and, oh, look, a gay guy. That's awesome. But it was all window dressing to where we are right now. Biden is going to be the pick. Um, Bernie Sanders is a communist, and that's not good for black people or anybody. So this is what it is. Do I think Joe Biden is going to beat Donald Trump? I have no idea. But I know that those debates are going to be hilarious, and I cannot <laughs> wait to watch it <laughs> while drinking. Right. <laughs> I mean, this is gonna be a whole production. It's gonna be a whole. Yes, production. Jen. What are your thoughts on on Super Tuesday and, and, and Joe Biden and Sanders? <laughs> what what you got going? Um. So, I mean, Key is right. I mean, I think ultimately we always knew it was going to come down to Biden. Um. I was hopeful that. Warren would have an opportunity, and, and to be honest with you, I'm probably still going to vote in that direction because it won't. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything um, because, uh, like, I I really like her. Um, I think that she really has everything that it takes. But you know, but we live in a country that's not ready to have a woman president. Like, plain and simple. Like, we just aren't. I mean, they were almost more willing to choose a an outwardly gay person than a woman president, which says a lot about the fact that this country still sees men as smarter and higher authority than they do women. A talentless um, gay guy. Like, he's talentless. His own right. city doesn't even like him. Like, come on. <laughs> right. So. Well, if you go to the root.com, they posted something, like, very interesting. Um, and basically... It's like this like spreadsheet that lets you know every single candidate's black agenda, you know? And so if you want to educate yourselves and get to know, um, you know, where each of the Democratic candidates stand, when it comes to the black agenda, you can check that out. I um, think Warren led that list, right? Yeah, Warren did lead that list. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, um, like what, what Jen said, um, I, I do think that Elizabeth Warren is super smart. And she's got, I mean, she's got it together, her point, like, to the, every little last detail. But I kind of see her as possibly being, like, a Secretary of the Treasury hopeful kind of thing. Because she's still good with the money and, like, going after Wall Street and protecting the consumer. I think, um, you know, if things kind of roll out, kind of how we think they might, yeah. um, there's still a place for her in the uh, executive branch yeah. of the government. And... <laughs> I've seen people say, you know, Elizabeth, I can't vote for Elizabeth Warren because she sounds like a substitute teacher. <laughs> so maybe, <laughs> maybe she'll be the Secretary yeah. of Education. And get a permanent teaching position Hello. in the White House. And wipe out this student debt. Come on, Elizabeth. See, see we're on to something now. Come on, Elizabeth. Do us right. Do us right. <laughs> yes, God. Yes, so, oh, yeah, Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Okay, first of all, although he's out of the race, which is great. 
he did do some crazy stuff. For one, yeah. Bloomberg, uh, the, the, the the church folk turned their back on him <gasps> yes. when they went to the church. They was like, no, thank you. Keep your tithes, your offerings, and all of that you're preaching. Mm -hmm. We're good. Yep. Appreciate you. Trevor Noah. <clears throat> Trevor Noah. Uh, I didn't see it, but I, I, I heard about it, how he tore yeah. Michael Bloomberg to shreds over mm. his uh, stop and frisk. Yeah. Um, he was racist. I yeah. mean, like, he said some very, you know, as the mayor of New York, you know, yeah. come on. You know, it's like people just don't forget that kind of stuff, or you can't just kind of like, you know, oh, I'm sorry. And that's yeah. yeah, no. And work. So, you know, he's out, and that's good. How about, though, this Bernie Sanders and Flavor Flav situation? <laughs> So first of mm. all, mm. Kia, <laughs> help us, please. <laughs> I am so disappointed in this entire situation. Flavor Flav has been a part of Public Enemy for the past 35 years since its inception. And it took one old white guy to break them up after 35 years. And the whole issue was the fact that um, I guess Chuck D went to a Bernie, was going to a Bernie Sanders event and endorsed Bernie Sanders and made it seem like it was a public enemy thing, not just a Chuck D thing. So then Flav came out and said, yo, I'm not endorsing anybody. I don't like what he stands for. Please send a cease and desist that I'm not endorsing him. And that's all he was saying. Now they can't use the music, just I'm not endorsing him. I don't want anybody getting any misleading messages that public enemy as a whole is endorsing Bernie Sanders. Well, Chuck D took his butt herself over there and just said, well, you're fired. Flavor Flav. Like, it, it's so sad and so stupid. But I, want, I, I never thought I would say this. I'm on that Flav's is... side. Listen, first of all, Chuck D, we love you and your, all of your intellectuals. Yeah, you're doing. boy. We, but Flavor Flav has a little bit more notoriety at this point. Hello, he had a reality show on and VH1. How can you fire somebody? How, you can't just fire somebody from the group. Do you own the public enemy? Mm. That's a joint situation. That's a collective. That's not just you. Yeah, well. You know, and Chuck I'm, D. Flavor Flav. Chuck D went a little bit too far, crack. too. Chuck D started bringing up the fact that Flavor Flav has, has had drug issues and he's a crackhead. He's a go back into rehab. He actually put wow. that on Twitter. And I'm like, that's low. For you, for someone you've been mm. in a group with for that long, for you to say that? Right. Oh, my gosh. Jen, so do you think this is going to um, leave, like, a bitter flavor of love in, um, <laughs> in uh, yeah. Flavor Flav's mouth? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it was, like, to, like he's clearly hating on him. Like, I don't know what really, like, what the animosity really is because clearly there was, like, he probably has wanted to get rid of Flavor Flav for a minute, and now he's using this as an excuse because otherwise it's completely left field. And I'm not normally on flavor flavor side either because I don't care that much about him. But he has a point. Like don't don't endorse somebody and then try to say that I'm in, like I'm also endorsing them. Like just say like you know that that should have been a personal thing. Chuck Chuck should have been like look look I'm endorsing him, but not to make it the whole public enemy. So it's crazy, and I don't see how um, he's going to be able to get away with it anyway. Flavor Flav definitely has much more notoriety. Notoriety. So, but yeah, still, kind of according to his clock, he might still have a little bit more time. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> that was cute. All right, listen. Uh, before we wrap this part up, speaking of Bernie Sanders, Sean King. So people are like, mm, he sound a little. That's the white dude, right? He is certainly. <laughs> See, the man is black, but he from the eye he might not look like it, but he is black. Kia, oh, get yourself together. <laughs> I, of course, I said that just for Kia. <laughs> just for Kia. <laughs> Kia, it's your turn to talk. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna die. Like, look, he's white, right? Uh... <laughs> Maybe we're really not quite sure because as light as he is, he's damn near clear. Anyway, you know, you know what? I can't. So, but no, seriously, though, all jokes aside, um, Sean King is problematic. Sean King has been problematic for the past couple of years with the issue he had with D Ray. And once again, he's put himself in the spotlight for just being a very sore loser, coming up with conspiracy theories that the Democratic Party was against Bernie Sanders. No, the Democratic Party is against communism and socialism. They let him run on this, and now they're just like, okay, like, no one wants this. So this lose gracefully. And if you support African Americans, the African American vote has clearly said we want Joe Biden. So you should be supporting us as a group, not not Bernie Sanders. That's that's my opinion. True, true. I mean, and then of course everybody has their own mm -hmm. opinion and takes on who they want to win. But if you are for um, 
the black agenda. Yeah. Um, and the community, then you got to be able to support mm -hmm. it. Um, well, especially and like, as a journalist too. Yeah, and especially for the Democratic base. Right. If you don't have the black voters, if, especially if you don't have the black women voters. Correct. You're not getting anywhere. Absolutely, because we hold the key. All right. So let's move on. Chris Matthews has retired from MSNBC. Well. <laughs> retired. Uh, that's the word we're going to use, but I'm sure. Okay. And you know, cites comments mm -hmm. that he's made to women. Okay. Um, wrapped up into that, some people have expressed their their um, desire to have Joy Matthews, um, excuse me, Joy Reid. Joy Reid, yes. Joy Reid to replace him. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you know what? And Joy Reid used to have, you know, she was part of that whole, like, primetime lineup. And then yeah. she was, you know, then she would cover for everybody. And then she has her AM Joy show yeah. on the weekends. But I think this would be a really great time and a great way for MSNBC to uh, make the issue with Chris Matthews go away really quick. Real quick. Right? And just, boom, slide into a read. And everybody's like, okay, we're good again. Absolutely. Because people will be more focused on the fact that they have a, a black woman in that, that spot. Yeah. Um, and almost. Yeah. Because Chris Matthews has been saying crazy things his whole entire career. He's like the opposite of like, um, what is his name again? We, our producer and I were talking about it. Sean Hannity. Right. Yeah, exactly. Sean, yeah. He's like, you know, the opposite of that on MSNBC. Correct. Like, not, right. But it, time's up. You can't keep saying anything. It's like, yeah. the, the era is gone and over with. Kia, Jen, one of you. Oh, Kia, you got her hands up. Then we'll come to you, Jen. Go ahead, Kale. Kia. Um, Jen, Jen couldn't make a comment about what we're actually talking about, but I have a real question. What is sexual harassment in 2020? You know that. You know that. That's mm. a great question, Kia. Because, because they're saying, yeah, he, they're saying he made comments, but what were the comments? Like, uh, apparently, some people said it's because he made a comment about the girl having on a nice dress or her makeup being so beautiful. It was something along those lines. It, it, what is the line for sexual harassment? Well, I think this, in this particular instance. Um, on top of his previous comments throughout his career, he associated Hitler with Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. He did. And, and that's what the issue is. And then is. Th at that point, that, I guess that was the breaking point for MSNBC. It's like, okay, now we got to let him go. Yeah. Uh, Which doesn't make any sense to me. Like, uh, it, takes, it took that. Right, exactly. For you right. To say, so forget about all the women that. You know, yeah. felt some kind of way. I mean, so 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 let's get back to Kia's question because I think it was a mm -hmm. great question. Um, it's so hard mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. like if I were a man, I probably wouldn't say a damn thing to any woman in the workplace at all, like yeah. because everything is so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you say, "Oh, your hair looks nice," oh my god, I feel offended. Like it just depends on who you're mm -hmm. talking to. Now, I think people are like sometimes I'm. I, I can't say what's good, bad, justified or not, but some things are just not sexual harassment. Now, mm -hmm. if a man says you have Thank a beautiful you. dress, good. If he says your boobs look great, then that's another. That's your boobs look great in that dress. That's a whole nother situation. Mm -hmm. Two very different statements. You know what I mean, Kia? What were you gonna say? And real quick, we all, as women here, <clears throat> we all have had female bosses or female coworkers who have said way more inappropriate crap to us. Oh yeah. Than any man has ever said in the workplace. Because they always like, oh, it's just girl talk. Oh, I'm just complimenting you. Nah, if, if he can't say my dress is pretty, then you can't say, oh, my God, I love that bra. It's really lifting and separating. I've had a woman say that to me at work. If men can't say about our dresses being cute, then women can't compliment on bra, lifting, separating. Your butt looks good. Where'd you get your BBL done? Oh, you got a boob job. Like, like nah, if we're, if we're just saying we can't do any of that, then we can't do any of that. And I'm off my soapbox. Uh, Dr. Jen? Uh, um, I think... I understand where Kia is coming from, but I think there is a line because it's just like it's just like a black person might be able to say something to another black person about certain things. A woman might be able to say something to another woman about certain things. A man has to respect the opposite sex, just like a white man should respect a black man. I think there's there's lines to it. Um, 
and, and there is a fine line between um, being sexist and just making nice comments. I think historically, men have made very sexist comments that we have tolerated. And now in 2020, we're saying, no, nah, we're not dealing with that no more. So it might come off as like, damn, you can't say nothing. But at the same token, I think we're seeing that, you know, we have to start to teach men that there's certain things that are appropriate and not appropriate. And in time, that will become the new norm. So, I mean, it's unfortunate that he's, you know, leaving the show because of it, but, you know, or partly because of it. Um, but it's just the way history is going. Yeah. Right. Oh, and no yeah. to Joy Reid. No, I don't want that. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want that. I don't want him. I don't want um. If they even try to put Al Sharpton in that spot, no. I will boycott. I will burn that building down. Like, nah. <laughs> let's just no. I'm good. Um, okay, I'm and then we just just start totally fresh. Disclaimer: That's Kia acting on her own, not on because yes. of Muppet. You can follow her I, at, I, at Kia. Oh, I'm mean. <laughs> no, yeah, we just want you to have a direct. Can, you know, voice and lineage. <laughs> I want you to live that out on your own. Okay. So, yeah. So, Black-owned business, the Honey Pot, mm-hmm. um, has come under fire from privileged white women. Who, what is up with that? Listen, did you hear what I said? Privileged. Okay. White women who feel like they can just rule the world and it's not your time anymore. Let me tell you something. The Honey Pot did a commercial for Target, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. They're saying, you know what? I want other little black girls and, you know, women and boys to be, feel like they can do what I've done. I, can, I have my product in Target. Yeah. Okay? This is still something to be celebrated mm-hmm. for black and brown people because we're so used to being, you know, buying white-owned product mm-hmm. in major stores. But white women took offense to it and started, you know, leaving racist comments um, dragged her ratings all the way down, okay? And But guess what we did? Mm. Guess what we did? Yeah, spent that black dollar. We spent that money, okay? And made her sales double. Mm. We put more so honey put, in that pot. Put more honey, mm. drizzle mm. in her pot. Because that's what we do. So thank you, privileged white women, for helping us to help sis get her money. I love it. Okay, honey. Kia, go ahead. <clears throat> um... Everybody in the show is getting honey pot gifts for Christmas, Black History Month, <laughs> Easter Sunday, Bastille Day, um, every Indian holiday that there is because she this girl deserves it. I saw that commercial and the commercial was was I thought it was great. And it was Black History Month. Like right. they had two other commercials with the lady who owns a lip bar or lip something and the guy who owns a black hair product. They all got these commercials saying it's great that we have these black owned businesses. But the fact that white women act like what she said is exclusionary when it wasn't doesn't make any sense. So sorry, white women, but we win. In oh, more than one way. Look, yes. what's exclusionary is when white women, uh, slave owners, had black wet nurses to feed their babies, and they couldn't feed their babies. That's oh, exclusionary. Well, they say something. Okay, you better speak on it. Seventy-five percent representing. <laughs> Yes, Dr. J. Now you talk about money talk. Talk that money talk for Honey Pie Girl. Look, look, that was so powerful because, you know, you guys are right. I mean, at the end of the day, it wasn't like, oh, this is only for black people or you can't buy it or we're not including you or you don't none of that was happening it was just saying like look we have you know we have a black owned business here and we like to support and i am so proud of all the money that actually went to them to support them because we need to see that more in all black business if we could show that we can do that in this particular business with honeypot we can do that in every black business and start using our black dollar to support other black businesses and we will be so much better off for it like i mean financially like it just shows that our money can really make a difference i mean they, they doubled their their income i mean it's amazing Absolutely. i mean and i mean we already know the yeah. power of the black dollar we do yeah. it's just it's just it's just training our minds um yeah. to, to to follow through with supporting yeah <laughs> and it's just sad that anyone that has that much time in their day 
to, I mean, just like, just not, there's no need to say anything. Let Correct. a business be a business and be successful. Correct. Why are you so mad? Because they ain't us. Right. Because <laughs> they ain't us. They won't so be mad. us. They won't, they want our pride. They want our culture, but they don't want the struggle. All right. Um, Oprah mm. took Ooh. a little tumble on stage she in LA. T- she had an out of balance situation. She did, but listen to me tell what was so crazy, my my sorority sisters, because I pledged in California and in Englewood, actually. So my line sisters and some of their friends were featured in her video because they, the, when she, before her sound check, the day before something, they were doing like a walk and she hey. wanted to do like a little video about health and they were featured and they went to the show. I love Mocha Marbles. And they went to um, some morning show, some national morning show ad had them on um, yesterday as well. But so when when this video started populating of the tumble, I was like, oh, Ooh. Auntie Oprah said it's the shoes. <laughs> but she's good though. Oh, she's, she's fine. Good. She is fine. She she fell. We fall all the time. So what? Yeah, what she, she was talking about. Balance. Balance. Right. It's so crazy that it happened when she was talking about balance. That's crazy. Well, see, Fifty Cent though, and Snoop yeah, Dogg. So first of all, let me tell you something. <laughs> Snoop just got off. Yeah. Of this situation with Gail. Mm. Not even completely off. And now you want her sister friend? And I don't think 50 Cent is over Gail. You know what? Like, he's still, like, why? let her go already. Let me tell you. The both of them need to cut it out. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Kia, get your brothers. I mean, they both need to cut it out. But all we said was don't call them out their name. They didn't. They just made a joke. So I can't, we, he did what we said. He didn't call her a bitch. He didn't say she's a dog or a hoe. He just said, looks like the ghost of Michael Jackson. Jackson just tripped you up, didn't it? Right. You know what? And, uh, and then he said, like Augusta Wynn from Kobe. Okay, there you go. So it was funny. I, I'm i not mad at them. And mm. when Oprah fell, it was kind of funny. It reminds me when my mom fell in front of Kmart when I was little. And me and my brother laughed so hard. She beat the crap out of us that night for laughing so hard. It was so funny. <laughs> oh, God. She should have beat you. Okay. <laughs> All right, of course, it's Kia's mom and the way Kia thinks. We're not saying beat you. <laughs> no, we have the chancla. So, look, my mom has been known to use her flip flops as a projectile. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's right. Right. It's like heat, it's heat seeking. Look, Dr. Jen, you have a son. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, okay. But anyway, that's how what we talk about today. We're talking about Oprah and 50 and what's his name? Snoop. Uh, Snoop, Snoop. Right, Snoop. What do you think they need to sit down? I, it was funny, but it was unnecessary. It, it, okay, so Snoop's comments before were unnecessary. This was funny. <laughs> and, and there's a difference between the two because I love right. Oprah. But to be honest, like, because I don't know, you know, depending on how religious people are or whatever, but it seemed like some real karma for her to trip up in the middle of saying about getting your balance together. So it's almost like, hmm, maybe she needs to rebalance her life. That was like a sign. That's what I was saying. I was like, you know, sometimes the universe will let you know when to take a seat. Yep. It's it's, it's, true. And, and and look, and 50 is always cracking on people. So oh, it just, it makes sense. Like, I thought it was, I thought it was funny. It was worth yeah, it. That's you know I'm, what? That's I'm I'm I love y'all. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> See, but you're talking to the dude who on the way into the studio, I tripped over the plug and almost fell. See? See? I'm speaking from experience. Ladies, <laughs> mwah, we love you. Thank you. <laughs> love you so much Bye. for adding the extra flavor. Thank the you. <laughs> Right. So See you, you guys week. are going to go, or we're going to stay we're gonna here. <laughs> Y'all will be right back with this week's Mocha Minute. <laughs> Brought to you about better luck in the bay. Yes. Oh. Hey there, are you enjoying Mocha in the Morning? Well, we're so glad that you are. We want your friends and family to enjoy it too. So please invite them to join us live on Fridays and also to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube.
Mocha Minute is brought to you by BlackInTheBay.com, your online connection to everything that's Black in the Bay. Hey, Mokumaro. So, this past weekend, we had the opportunity to bring our media suite to the Hot Accessories Fashion Week 2020. So, here is a behind the scenes, after the show, little bold roast of the organizers who put the show on. And later on, throughout the season, we will show you all of the designers that we were able to interview. So, check this little bold roast out. And the venue was really nice, too, the Eva Love yeah. place. <laughs> Hello, Mokavaros. I'm officially Jorge, and we are at Hot Accessories uh, Fashion Week 2020 in the Mocha in the Morning Media Suite. And I have on set right now the dream team putting it all together <laughs> Miss Tanisha Kim and the man himself, Lacey B. <laughs> hey, great show tonight. Thanks for coming, man. So we're breaking everything down, so that's why like the ferns are leaving and things are coming up. But um, the Roman shows are over, but the work is not done, right? Uh, almost. <laughs> almost done. <laughs> we're cleaning. Yeah. Well, okay. So um, in the media suite all night tonight, what I kept hearing was, um, and not just from um, you know the designers talking about the other designers, but the actual like people who are in the audience, the customers, mm -hmm. they were saying like, wow, like. This time around, you know, the artists and the designers stepped it up, and there were some really like fabulous, unique um, pieces that were presented. Um, and they, um, and I also heard lots of comments about like just um, the creativity output that's happening mm -hmm. um, and the quality of the presentations. Yeah. So you know, this is. The second year, right? For hot accessories? Ten. Ten. Is it ten? ten. Oh, I just said it's only, it's no, it's only your I second just year. Four years. 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 Four you know, is growing. I mean, you know, to do this yep. for 10 years. Yep. And at the same time, so are the people who are participating, like the designers oh, yeah. oh, yeah. and, yeah. and just the talent that's coming out. Lacey, what's that? What's up? You know, you know what it is, man? It's just um, you find this talent in Tampa Bay and beyond, mm -hmm. you know, awesome talent, and you just try to put like, you know, that platform together for them. And then we have these two fabulous ladies who just put it all together for me. Right. They're, 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 they're the creative minds. Nice. You know I mean? Ooh. Let's put these designs together and make it happen on the runway. Now, like, you know, Kim, because you're in the back of the house, right? Yes. And so you got to make sure that everything that's going on, you know, behind the stage and all that kind of good stuff, yeah. you know, you just got to make sure that they get out there, right? Yeah, so we, you know, not just the models, but the designers, lining them up, getting them ready, making sure, and she was back there with me too. Um, you know, we have a lot of people back to back in these crazy unique things this year. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just, you know, take a necklace off, put a necklace on. It right. was amazing the things that they had these these models do. So, um, you know, it was it was it was a lot of work this year, but I think it, it was yeah. everybody was backstage, there was a really good vibe. That's right. awesome. There yeah. really was. Now Tanisha, so um you know, when you guys sit down and start like planning, right? Mm -hmm. So, what are like, <laughs> what are the first headaches that you have? <laughs> you know what? About... <laughs> I don't think that there's ever really any major headaches until the very end, because then everybody starts to kind of ping a little bit, and so the questions start flooding ah. in, and you're like, okay, I know we addressed this, but we're just gonna reiterate it. But really, when you've been doing something for ten years, like Lacey has been you kind of have it down to a science mm -hmm. and you know what to expect and so not too many headaches. Yeah, well you know what I think is really cool too is that a lot of people just still, you know, don't get that, you know, you know this talent is, you know, uh, is exporting out of the Tampa Bay area, right, right. which is really super mm -hmm. cool. And, you know, as far as like you, the location w w where you have the events and stuff like that, people, it just, you know, people don't immediately think that. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, wow, you show up, you know, and the crowd is here, the mm -hmm. designers are here, like the show is popping. And mm -hmm. like, you know, I think that's just so awesome. So what is, are you gonna share 
what that formula is so that everybody else can get it. formula it's been bottles. It's been, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's been bottles and um, <laughs> I, I can't shoot it. Only they, they know it. But, um, but honestly, um, what it is basically, I mean, it, it's just finding the right the right people who mm -hmm. believe in the brand mm -hmm. and believe in, believe in needing the platform that we provide. And if you don't think that it's, it's for you, it's, 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 it, it benefits you as a, as a platform, then you take your brand someplace else. You know I mean? But once you believe in what we're doing and what we're, we're presenting, and once your brand, you know, you think your brand fits that platform and need, that needs that platform, then you, you, you come in and, um, you, and, and you join the TFM um, landscape, join, join our team. And once, once, you join the, once you join our team, you, you know the way we work, because they'll explain to you exactly where we work when, once we, we have a, meet a meeting. And you know we work very diligently with the designers. We make we, we don't just we don't just put on a show, but we also educate the, the models. Right. When every model who have come through us for any show we've done, have left educated and Much better as a, yeah. as a model stronger, yeah. and stronger. I mean, they, when they go to all the open calls, they were, they, were, they were like, oh wow, I didn't know we, I could do this. Mm -hmm. You know, but because we train them in certain, we train we train our models. Once, once they come to a open call, mm -hmm. we teach them what we teach, 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 teach them about the industry. Right. About ins and outs, what to do, what not to do, how to handle themselves, how to carry themselves. And it, and these two ladies have been awesome just doing that mm -hmm. and you know, and, you know, it's just a great team. Yeah, and that's so imperative too because a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people new to the industry, the fashion industry, mm -hmm. whether it's as a designer, a model, a stylist, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, they show up like, you know, they know the T, the mm -hmm. teal, and you know, they're gonna be cashing yeah. checks, but they don't realize, mm -hmm. you know, you have to really learn the business. And I know you guys really, that's like, you know, like the foundation mm -hmm. of the fashion movement. Right. Oh, yeah, trademark, hey. Mm -hmm. uh, right. You know what I mean? It is, it is, it is. Yeah, it you is. know. I got my lawyers, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, but we, we teach we, we teach even the designers. Every, every designer every designer will come through us, whether it's a garment, garment designer or accessory designer. Yeah, I've all said the same thing. They benefit so much from us from what we do. You know, they want to know what's the blueprint, but we can set we can set. Yeah, we, right. we, we, we got to keep it right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we keep it right here. Yeah, you know, and it's just about um basically just showing them what benefits their brand. You right. Know what I'm That's the bottom line. And yeah. Then yeah. We had a lot of people shopping tonight. Yeah, right. and, and, and yes. this event's about shopping. It's not about just coming to coming to a show and just watching a show and then leaving. It's about shopping, engaging the brand, the brands yep. we, we have we have on display, mm -hmm. and supporting them and just spending money. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Support it. Support yeah. it. So how do we? Um, and when people do want to get involved with the fashion movement, how accessories, rig, mm -hmm. um, even um, all the other events that you do, um, what do they need to do if they're like, hey, so? You know, how can I jump, you know, on board with your team? <laughs> they need to follow the fashion movement on Instagram, first of all. LLC. That's right, <laughs> uh, LLC. And um, they just need to follow the page. We're, if they follow the page, they'll see everything that's up and coming, mm -hmm. come out to the castings, yeah. register online on the website when they see those registration calls, go out see. for designers, mm -hmm. and become a part of it. Because fashion movement is the brand that builds other brands. It mm -hmm. really is. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, ever you know, like in the Bay Area, you know, the fashion movie, you immediately know what's mm -hmm. what's going down. Yeah, you know, they ha the events happen, people participate. You know, you guys are like doing the thing, and mm -hmm. we love coming out every single time. Yeah, yeah. even if it's only been like two years. We love having you. We love having you. See, I'm part of the movement now too, though. See? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. Hey, hey. Hey, so um, yeah. our next event is when? Do we know? It's going to be August um, 29th. It's oh, Fashion Spice, the one you, you were last year also. Look at that. With the that'll be two years. On it. <laughs> on it. <laughs> exactly. It's a kid of those. My anniversary. See, I was talking about me. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Hey, thanks, you guys. We were here all night. The collections were awesome. Designers were awesome. You guys are awesome. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing some awesome things in the Bay Area. Uh, you guys follow the fashion movement, and uh, we really appreciate them adding a flavor. <laughs> to your morning blend. I'm mm -hmm. Shirley Jorge, and you've been watching Mocha in the Morning at the Hop Accessories Fashion Week 2020 in the Mocha in the Morning Media Suite. Stay tuned for more Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend. Okay, so Stress to Success 8 is coming March 14th, which is Saturday, next Saturday. It's going to be at the Center for Women over in the Hyde Park area. 
make sure to come out. It's going to be amazing. We have a ton of great speakers that are going to talk about financial strategies, wealth building, uh, mortgage assistance, and of course, I'll be talking about student loans. So I want to see you there. So make sure to come out, bring some friends, bring clients that uh, you're working with so they can learn a lot more about different strategies to become successful. And of course, I will have food, mimosas, and we'll have a really good time networking with each other, like-minded people getting together, enjoying a wonderful Saturday, so brunching it up. So I am looking forward to seeing you there. All right, this week's mocha moment is of a UCLA gymnast mm -hmm. who killed her Beyonce floor routine. Take a look at this. She absolutely brought it home. Yes. All right, that has been this week's Mocha in the Morning. I am your host, <laughs> Miss Keisha Boy. And this is officially Warning. We have certainly enjoyed you today. We hope that you've enjoyed us. It was so much fun. Super. Listen. Super Mocha. Make sure you share, share Mocha in the Morning with your friends, your families, coworkers. You know, join our page, Mocha Morning Show. Um, like us on all platforms, Mocha Morning Show. Just watch and share. Everybody yeah. needs to have a little flavor in their morning plans. Mm -hmm. Don't hold it all to yourself. And I know it's Friday and yeah. March 4th was two days ago, but I want to say it's continue to march forward. That's right. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll see you all next week. Talk soon. Bye. Adios. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got to sanitize hey, workspace. Hey, yes, we do. We're home of free. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the diet that's a diet disease. <laughs>